Live from Valentin, it's the mouthpiece with Turn it up, baby. Turn it up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the mouthpiece. I'm your host, Brady Matthews. How are we doing, everyone? Welcome. Uh, happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday. What a huge weekend of hoops. An awesome weekend of hoops. The final four stage is set with UConn and Purdue as the heavy favorites. At least I think of the heavy favorites, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. I'm going to also let you know who stands in the way of UConn and Purdue. And he's one of the bad, baddest DJs around. And uh, he's kicking ass, if you will. Also, Caitlin Clark gets a rematch with Angel Reese today. Ray and I are going to go check that out. Maybe yes. at Hot Legs. What do yeah, you say, yeah, Ray? A little Hot Legs. <laughs> shout out, no free shout outs. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it is, it's kind of weird with the uh, with with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. They kind of giving you the Larry Bird, Magic Johnson vibes, some weird way. But I'm going to break that down for you guys as well. Also, a certain Chiefs wide receiver, your guy, Mano. Your best he friend. He might he be in some guy. serious trouble. Might be in some serious trouble. It's called a little hit and run. That's a no ski in uh, in, uh, <laughs> no ski. in Dallas, Texas, if you will. Uh, and, and everywhere also, else. Yeah, and also <laughs> everywhere else. Just there. Also, I would say that's pretty universal. Um, a huge. Uh, the Jets uh, pick up a huge acquisition to make their defense even more lethal. And also, Mano's going to break down a bunch of baseball for us. And uh, with that said, with that said, let me introduce my All Star panel to the left of me. He's our Valuetainment All Star. Uh, please make a warm welcome for my guy, Chris Mano. Thank you, as always, man. Excited to be here. Ton going on. Appreciate everybody who's, who's on with us right now. Thank yeah. you. Good look, to be live. Let's do it. Yeah, you're looking good. You also were at the model volleyball as well, right? I was, man. I got toasted out there. I saw but it, that, dude. It was, dude. Nah, it was a blast, though, man. We made a lot of good connects, talked to some great people. Yep. It should help the show, I think, going forward. It should be awesome. 100%. Happy yeah. you're here. Uh, next to him, he's uh, got the best chest hair this side of the 95. Uh, we're always happy to have him, Mr. UFC himself. Ray Sherwood, everyone give it for Ray That's Sherwood. It. Nice to have you back, Ray. Nice to have Look you back. Double back, barrel, <laughs> double barrel shots. I didn't get the invite to model volleyball, guys. What the hell? Well, you know what, Ray? Sometimes you just got to show up to things. You know? I didn't even get. The, I didn't even know what was going on. I like <laughs> what that. do you mean, show I didn't, up? I didn't show up know, to things I don't know happening. I didn't what? know what's going on. Check my Instagram. Imagine I just like follow, just like come out of the water in Miami. But. Ray, you're always invited. You know that. Your VT family. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> uh, and our guy behind the computer, uh, he's Cleveland's very own. He keeps the show on the right track, if you will. Give it up for Malik Hudson, everybody. What's up, Malik? Let's go, Malik. Good to see you, Malik. You see that shirt right there? You see this shirt? Yeah. He Look says, screw Michael Jordan. Cleveland's, <laughs> Cleveland's king. This is from 2007 I when he you, carried the worst team ever put. to the NBA Finals. Cleveland's king, and then he leaves. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> what a stud. This is when Twice. he carried his team to the finals in his, uh, what was it, his third, fourth year? Yeah. With the worst roster you possibly could have, like a roster that Jordan probably wouldn't have been. Oh, you're still doing that, huh? You're still uh, doing that? Yeah, of course. Okay, we can revisit that big guy because you got toasted on Instagram, by the way, with that. Jordan with that, sucks. What's with that, all that nonsense? <laughs> hey, did I you have it. fun at model, model Volleyball? It looks like you're having a blast with a couple of the, the guys, girls. Yeah, oh yeah, I had Pichis. a blast. Uh, Sauce Cast crew got came nice in. Tab. Adam did his thing. Whole crew did a thing. Nat did her thing. Uh, everybody, Jorge. Jorge was there, yeah. too. That guy behind the booth. Shout out, Jorge. Shout Jorge. Give us some wow, Jorge. He did a great job. Great team out there. And, and Alejandro, Alejandro as well was there. Alejandro, Our guy was, Alejandro was yep. there. Everyone. Taking pics of girls. It was a team <laughs> effort except for Ray. Ray wasn't there. He was on the boat picking up on Colombian chicks. And that's fine. <laughs> so were you, but it's just it's, on land. You know, <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. It's the same thing. Uh, with that said, lots to talk about. A lot of fun things to talk about. I'm really excited for the Final Four for the men's and the women's division. Uh, last night was really great because NC State is kind, of the, um, is kind of like the darling story, if you will, of the whole tournament, right? Don't you think, Mano, with DJ Burns last night kind of putting on a clinic? Yeah, man. I love the way the Final Four shook out. It's sick. We got, like, one blue blood program in UConn, and then, like, three Cinderella's coming to, like, knock them off. So I think it's sick. Purdue hasn't been to a Final Four in 40 years. I mean, Bama, they're a football powerhouse, but here we are, and they're in the Final Four again. Shout Aaron Estrada, former Hofstra great. And, yeah, NC State, we can break them down a little further, man. They are the darling for sure. A lot of fun to watch and a lot going on behind the scenes. I hope we get a chance to get into that a little bit. For sure. And uh, I was going to show us that model volleyball, but we'll show that later in, later in the show because that was a fun thing that we got to do with Chase Claypool. Yeah, it was sick, So man. we'll tackle that when, yeah, when, we get to, uh, when we get to the NFL. But more on NC State. Can we go to the um, – Malik, can you go to the Big Cat post that I put there? Uh, I thought this was a really interesting stat because NC State, I mean, was really left for dead. And then, um, let's see, they hit the buzzer beater. Uh, and then the guy had an 87% free throw shooting and missed two free throws in the game. He hasn't missed all year. 
for this Final Four run. I mean, they were pretty much left for dead, weren't they, Mano? The NC State? Oh, yeah. NC State, everything they're doing now is house money, man. They were 11 seed, had no business being there. If you look at how they got into the tournament, uh, they had lost 10 out of 14, four in a row going into the ACC tournament. This is a cool thing I, I kind of stumbled upon. Coach Kevin Keats was as good as fired, right, yeah, going into this tournament. For sure. So check this out. He had a clause in his contract that if he won the ACC tournament, it triggers a two-year extension. No kidding. So he wins the ACC tournament, triggers this two-year extension. He gets a $100,000 bonus this year and a $400,000 raise starting next year. So does anybody love their team right now more than Coach Kevin Keats? Good for you. Keep rolling. I'm, I'm loving this story. Was man. he like, do you think he pulled those guys in the locker room, right? And he was like, listen to me right now. Hey, I need to do I, this for me. Yeah. <laughs> I got a down payment on a house. <laughs> I have a clause. I have a, I have a okay? mortgage. <laughs> Some of you guys don't know what that is, all right? I can't come home if we don't get this. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Yeah, this is the first time that they've... I didn't um, see this coming at this all. Is well, it's okay. It's the first time they've advanced to the Final Four since 1983. Um yeah, DJ, they've with the stunning 76 64 victory over the fourth seeded Duke. Yeah, this was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. That's how close they were to this never ever happening, and they've been on fire since then. Yeah, but Just also caught fire. DJ Burns and DJ Horn. DJ Horn dropped 20 with four yep. boards and three assists in For the victory sure. as well. So, with that said, they look awesome. I don't know if. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to advance, but they're definitely standing in the way with Purdue and UConn looking you like think, the heavy favorites. You think this is where their Cinderella story ends? I think it is. Hey, I D really do. I think this is where DJ oh. gets burned. Really? Oh, Ooh. Very nice. I see what Take you did Take that, there. DJ. D hey, <laughs> DJ. Off set now, Brady. You're good. You're done. DJ Burns, Show's over. Dude, dude. DJ Burns has been like, there we go. DJ Burns has been like the darling of the tournament, man. He's so like fundamentally sound. Yeah. Big dude could step out, shoot it a little bit, and he's like not a super athlete. I get Zach Randolph vibes. I was from just him. about to say. I was just about to yeah. say. He gives me vibes you know of crazy? that girl from Iowa State. He gives me What's vibes from Trudy from. Do you know what's crazy too? <laughs> what's crazy too is that you know what? That hey, too. NFL teams are talking about. DJ Burns now. <laughs> Look, no, check this out. I'm telling you, I, yo, I train a guy yeah, who no went to way. Wagner on a full basketball scholarship, got pulled to the football field after his sophomore year, and he got drafted in the sixth round. Seriously? Yeah. So they look, isn't it? Greg Sanat. Shout Greg Sanat. Didn't so a, they. Didn't hold the on. Guy from so, Kansas City just get drafted? It happens too? a lot. So from what happens rugby. is they're yeah. looking for guys who have great feet. And, D, and DJ Burns is listed at 6'9. He's about 6'7 and a half. And he's 275. But he's a great athlete and he's got fantastic feet, which is what you're looking for in a tackle. So teams are like, if the NBA thing doesn't work out, I mean, we, we might have something here. And that's kind of picking up some steam over the last day or two, so that's pretty cool. I some of the uh, individual it. stories of the players has been fun. Obviously, we could talk about Zach Eady. I was just week, about to yeah, say, let's yeah. get there, man. The week he had has been Yeah, has been a because big uh, his 40-point game uh, lifted them over Purdue, and that was pretty great. Absolutely. I mean, not Purdue, over Tennessee. So that was uh, right. that was definitely something to watch as well. Um, Zach Eady, though, was kind of in the – he's kind of in the um, – He's kind of in the news, not for what he did on the court, but what he's been saying on or off the court, and per doing. se. And doing. <laughs> he's and been doing. very busy in his layoff back to Indiana, if you will. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, with that said, I mean, they looked really good, though. 40 points. He said he had a press conference where he said there was a lot of coaches that passed on him. Oh, that's my bad. And he used it as his fuel. Yeah, that's my bad today. Don't worry. We're not going to step we'll on that. There. That's all you, baby boy. Uh, all right. So, with that said... Um, who do you predict? Who do you predict in your? Um, who do you got, Ray? I, what do you got for for the for the championship game? I got Purdue and UConn, but it's almost like I'm rooting for NC State now. It's like how could you not? How could you not? I know root for they're, they're kind of like your. Um, I, I see it ending like you, but I want them. I ultimately, I think UConn's going to win the overall tournament, but um, I don't even see him. I don't see Bama touching them. Yeah, UConn is so tough, dude. I mean. I don't know, dude. Like the the guy Donovan Klingen looks like he's the real deal, dude. Like he looks like he might be the number Oof. one draft pick, not Filipowski, if you ask me. I mean, this kid was blocking everybody. Did you see that block against the kid versus Illinois? You yeah, went up, you went up and tried to dunk, and he just, just totally pushed the kid to the ground. Yeah, uh, with the which is the meanest block. Um, UConn does look like the heavy favorite to beat Alabama and take the championship, but um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough because Purdue's got a big guy as well. And, um, you know, if they meet in the finals, it's going to be, it's not going to be easy for either team. That's for sure. Um, but that said though, Zach Eady, we have some Zach Eady highlights. Can you go to that, uh, Malik the, on the court, right? He, um, well, this is, we're going to go, we're going to just going to play a little bit of highlights of Zach Eady for people at home that haven't, the, you don't know, know who he one? is. What? The camping one. Yeah. Camping out. Because what I, what I noticed about his game when I watched against Tennessee, this guy gets no effing calls. Like, he's camping out in the paint for nine seconds, dude. Like, 
Come on, bro. You're telling me there's not some... That, listen, I'm not calling it conspiracy or whatever the F you want to call it. But, like, dude, look at... You can count right now. He's, he did this the whole game. And then also he got he got the most fouls out of total out of the whole game. Well, with big guys like that, it always happened with Shaq. It happens with LeBron a lot. The, what, what happens with the refs is they... And there's probably 50 more fouls you can call throughout the game. These guys are getting mauled every play. So it seems like he's getting a lot of fouls. But if they really called every foul that he got or Shaq got... I mean, what do you do with a guy like Shaq or a guy like LeBron other than foul them? You can't play straight-up defense on them and stop them. They're just too big and dominant. This guy's seven foot four. DJ Burns is a huge dude. And you're going to see him on the floor next to Zach Eady, and you're going to be like, whoa, that's, that's a big discrepancy right there. Yeah, here's the thing. Zach Eady's also getting, he's also getting filleted off the court as well with this press conference. Let's go to the next one, Malik, that you have there. Um, the Randall rant. Go to that one. I thought this was hilarious. Just the stuff that he says. Turn it up. I get to pay him back. Like, there was, there was so many coaches that, that looked over me. Um, like, you could name a program. I can name a coach that looked over me. Um, the Tennessee, Rick Barnes is a great coach, but he, he was in a bunch of our practice, looked over me. Like It's kind of been the story of my life. People have doubted me. People look past me and can't do that anymore. He's got a funny voice. Yeah, he, um, big guys have uh, the most monotone voices. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. Ever? Andre the Giant, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, same thing. Um, Just really deep. Barbara Streisand. No. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. But no, like I don't know. I'm excited for, I'm excited for the games. Um, I think they're going to be awesome. But my prediction is I think NC State gets in, and you heard it here first, North Carolina State wins the whole thing. Oh, boy. I don't, I mean, that's, that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. That's, just, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Malik, who do you have winning the championship? Uh, I mean, Not I feel NC like State. The, clear, NC the, the clear person would be UConn because they are, like, the definitive number one. Right. But uh, I feel like it, the winner might come out of that NC State-Purdue game. It's some, some weird energy going on over there. You think so? I don't know. Yeah. UConn looks like they could definitely play in the NBA right now. Yeah, that's an NBA, NBA team and, at this point. And that's what I, everyone, I think, loves about the tournament is in college, we talked about it the last time, and somebody has an off-shooting night while the other team yep. cooks, and UConn's going home because I think if UConn plays them ten times – Probably beat them like eight, right? Well, also but if that night they they come out cold and the other guys come out hot. They, yeah, well, I mean, end. you looked at the UConn U of I game. I remember I put the game on. Yeah, I was like, this is not even going to be a game, but I'm going right. to watch anyways. And it was twenty three twenty three, and then after the first half, I was like, oh shit, maybe maybe U of I. Yeah. But all you have to do is make a couple adjustments. UConn goes off for a 30 0 run, and then they showed exactly yeah. what they really I are. I guarantee you know? Hurley was in there and was like, listen, you. Yeah, probably killed him. I also want a bonus. Yeah, he's also like, there is no clause in my contract. <laughs> this is all I got. Yeah. I'm going to kick your dad's ass. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know. Um, even with that said, all the fireworks with that, with the men's tournament, there's to be even, even more fireworks with the women's tournament, which I've even, I think I'm even more excited for the women's tournament, believe it or not. Ray, you've got money on this, huh? Yeah, I got, I got Iowa. Now, what makes you think I? What is? What is? It's before Kate, we get it's to Caitlin it, Caitlin Clark. I know, but they're only a one and a half favorite. I, why do you want to touch that juice? Why are you putting a hundred dollars on that? Bitch? <laughs> I Jesus, well, blow dude. me up on. on live Sorry, TV bro. Here, so, you know, okay. You're a betting guy. You're so, a betting guy. So hitter, you, you honestly. I am not. You influence me I way not. more. No, no, no. I, I, he's dude, lying to I put everyone small more. I put little, just little breadcrumbs out there. I just say, I say, eat the cheese and eat the bread. This is this is Brady. This is Brady. He's like, hey, you know, I think that they're gonna win. You should bet on this and then all of a sudden like two minutes later I see him betting on his phone that is not true <laughs> it's not true at all as don't he make, puts on the glasses new ego this, this is in Brady talk. I have glaucoma what do you want from me um, I am excited for the women's tournament though Mano what are you looking for for the women's tournament before you say that I am looking forward to Caitlin Clark and uh, Angel Reese because it gives me the Larry Bird Magic Johnson vibes it really does because they've been rivals in college right yeah and now they're, I mean, I mean, obviously they only play once Indiana State and Michigan State, but I, I like this rematch a lot because you've got a girl that can shoot from the outside, but then you have a girl that can ground a pound on the inside, but then can also shoot the three at Angel Reese. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think from a fan standpoint, this is the this is the final four you were hoping for, right? For sure. Star power everywhere. On LSU, you have Angel Reese, obviously. You have Haley Van Lith, who transferred in. And you got Flauge over there. And then on the yep. other side, Flo you jo. have Caitlin Clark. Yep. So everyone's jacked up about that. And then on the other side, you got Paige Beckers, who's an absolute killer. And Juju Watkins at USC, who's everyone's known about since she's in high school. She'll go drop a 30 or 40 piece on anybody. So it should be a blast to watch. These are the teams that everybody wants. Star power. I bet you they get the best viewership they've ever gotten. Yep. I mean, I'm excited again. We talked about it the last time is these girls now have me to the point where I'm like, either one of these games, I need to sit down and make sure I'm, I'm tuned in. Malik, is Caitlin Clark the best um, college 
basketball player ever? Ever? ever. Uh, I want to say ever, but I mean, accolades wise, like you can't compare all basketball. You could probably say best women's basketball because that's the sport that she's Ooh, playing. playing a Is dangerous she game, Malik. LeBron James. No. Uh, I mean, on Mar- I'll give you a stat. On March 3rd, she broke Pete Maravich's record. She yeah. only had to, she had to throw in a 10-point win over Ohio State to make history. She needed 18 points to break the record. Going into that game, she scored 35. Yeah. I mean, that's in- incredible. I mean, the girl's, the girl's incredible. She's light touch. She can shoot from half court. So, with that said, Malik, what's your prediction? Who do you got, LSU or Iowa? Uh, I like LSU. I think they got the numbers. They got I the agree. depth for that. Like, it's basically three-on-one with Caitlin Clark versus those girls at LSU. And I feel like if they, they play right, they could just they just beat her. At the end of and the I completely agree with you, Malik, number-wise. But I think if you – I mean, this is a big – this is right up your alley, right? What's the one thing that's eluded Caitlin Clark is a national title, and you know – they want her to get a national title. Of course. So don't be shocked at all if there's no. some kind of, you know, Ray, we'll see. I, we'll see how I that don't goes. hate that bet. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally not going to do it too, Brady. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I love the, the tournament's great because there's still a lot of fireworks, like I said. Uh, I loved Cameron Brink letting the refs know um, the other night when she got fouled out. Can you play that against Audi Crooks? Because uh, there's just a lot of these chicks are kind of showing their true colors, and this is the best part about, about the tournament. When she just lets her know. She lets the ref know. Watch. And also, Audi Crooks definitely fucking threw herself on the ground. She threw herself on the ground for She looks sure. like DJ. Um... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and Cameron on, Brink buddy. declared she's coming out a year early now. Watch this so for the ref. She's going to declare Woo, for the draft. There we go. <laughs> that's my girl. See, that's the kind of, that's the kind of girl I, love, I want right there. That, I want that action. Well, look, the girls get fried when they kind of emote, like where the guys do it all the time. you got to understand these girls are putting a ton of hours in. Like, I mean, anything you do that much... Uh, and put invest that much of your energy and time and passion into when you think you're getting screwed, man, you, you're bound to chat about it. And these girls are just, they're kind of doing what the guys do. Like, I don't think anybody really, I mean, they get a lot of like additional heat, it seems like on social media. I'm cool with it, man. I see the time that the girls put in when I was in school. and For sure. I'm cool with it. And also they're, they're almost, if not more passionate than the guys, because, you know, they want to win just as bad. And I think they feel like they have a point to prove. Like the dudes, they almost, we almost, um, subconsciously think like this is part of what dudes are supposed to do they're supposed to be playing sports and I think the girls you know right or wrong they want to prove they want to prove like look this is they belong, we too. belong here too well so. guess what you don't no I'm just joking <laughs> no I'm kidding for sure I totally not kidding uh, can we play Angel Reese I want to I want to show her clip too she's no dude she has no uh, no problem getting her hands dirty for sure when she plays ball and that's the reason why I'm excited for this game too you think there's going to be any controversy oh for sure yeah I think there'll be some there'll be some, there'll be some bad blood there'll be some and heat. even the LSU Coach is like super, like yeah. flamboyant Look at and loud yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, watch right here. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, she's just throwing elbows, yeah, grabbing hair. Fuck, elbows. Watch. Look elbow to the face. There you go. Have some, have an elbow sandwich Not and grab her hair. That's impressive. That's Ray, impressive. She just to took do. out two people. That girl's, that girl's six seven too. Yeah. The girl that she. I wouldn't mess down. with that chick. We got Zach Eady, his chick right there. Boom. Yeah, they have nine some, foot babies. Yeah, you know that. I wouldn't doubt if there's some hands tonight. Honestly, I would, dude. I would look. I would be great. Some no nails. One's gonna, no one's gonna throw hands, and no one's gonna get kicked out of that game. Um, well, maybe Caitlin Clark's dad. Let's show that. This one's yeah. great. I love showing Caitlin Clark's dad getting heated on the sidelines because uh, he knows his daughter's gonna be uh, worth a billion dollars, and he's telling her to chill the f out in the, during the game. I think I'd be just like that with my oh, for kid sure. Oh, if yeah, they carry on, for sure. I'd be like, yo, yeah. chill out, figure it out, stay within yourself. It's good that she has him to kind of like center her because she can, you know, it's easy when you get the accolades that she's she got. She kind of looks like Pete Maravich with a ponytail a little bit, doesn't she? <laughs> no? She's yelling at her dad right there. No, look at him. Yeah, look at him. Shut up. That's all I needed to say. I she could knew play, right away. I could play his brother. Well, who knows better than dad? Like, he's been watching her play since she's little. I'm sure when she gets crazy like that, her game is affected. So he's like, look, stay here. We need you here. Right. So he knows. Okay. Mano, did you predict who you're going to have? Who's, who, who wins I the I mean, game? I got the same ones as Ray. I think everyone. You think I, Iowa's got it? I think. Oh, you mean in the girls' tournament? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think Iowa. I, I think whoever wins the LSU. But, again, it's the same deal, man. There's studs on the other side. Beckers and Juju are getting no shine because everyone wants to see this yeah. rematch here. Yeah. Yeah. But those two are killers on the other side, too. They can go off for 30 any night, too. So, And Juju, is she's cool, man. I've been seeing her since she's in high school. She's fun to watch out there. Malik, honest question. Honest question for you. You think Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA? No. <laughs> you know why? There's a why? person called Draymond Green, and he's going to rough her up. That's true, though. <laughs> no, that's but also, it. but also, I mean, Steph Curry's not the strongest of guys in the whole world. I mean, like, he gets pushed around pretty good. You don't think she could hold her own with the dudes? I bet you she could. 
Uh, no. I mean, that's not disrespect to her, but it's right. women's basketball and men's basketball is a totally different game. You ever played with chicks before, dude? Yes, I have. They will hit you in the balls. They don't give it. They don't give yeah, a shit. Yeah, I've hooped with a coll- collegiate basketball team, women's basketball team. Right, they can ball, no but like <laughs> NBA and college girl, I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. In so I'm today's looking forward. World, you never know. I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking forward to tonight for sure. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot of really good games, and I want to see Ray win his money. Um, and Brady too. I hope he wins this money. That I'm he's not, saying that he's no. currently not betting, but he'll absolutely bet at the last not. absolute Absol- minute. Absolutely not. Yes, nope. he will. Nope. We're keeping our money <laughs> in our wallet, right? Uh, moving on to the NFL, Mano. We have some fireworks. Your boys, the Kansas City Chiefs, are mm-hmm. in the news, and it isn't for anything good. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to take this away? Or you want me? I mean, to take look. It? I, obviously, we don't know everything, but Actually, it's not looking great. Malik, play the video. Yeah, you can play the video. I mean. <laughs> It's them scrambling from the scene. <laughs> yes. Look at this. Uh-oh. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, someone caught it on the dash cam. So, I mean, there's nothing There's nothing going to surprise us. But now we need to know, like, what's going on. How did this come about? Like, yeah. There's I'm, a lot There's a lot here to take apart, right? So they appear to be racing. Uh, they obviously caused a crash involving other people. And then they left the scene of the crime. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's been some rumors that they left allegedly because they had illegal guns in the car. Oh, so that's going to make things far worse. Now, uh, we have to uh, – let me just – a note to athletes. Guys, this is the second time this has happened. Uh, Cam Sutton, this happened with the Detroit Lions a couple of weeks ago, and he got and, released. And Riggs. Guys. Yeah. Don't disappear. Yeah. Like when you disappear for two weeks, Bad. Rasheed Rice, it's been over a day now. Yeah. When you disappear, guys, you look guilty. Yeah. So lawyer up, figure it out, but face it now because immediately you're guilty in the court of public opinion as soon as you disappear. So don't disappear, please. Yeah, I think it was the firearms, and I think it was uh, some other stuff that well, they think they had in there and, too that and, was illegal, if you and know now, what I'm saying. Obviously, the, the ramifications are going to be how injured, unfortunately, is somebody in the crash? Like if it's a. The the penalty will be, you know, based upon if it's a major injury, a minor injury, or no injury, obviously. And it's going to be a matter of was Rasheed Rice driving the car or was he not driving the car? And I'm sure that he might be able to, you know, they'll probably find a way to say somebody else. The name is under his car, but they don't know if he was driving the car or if he he fleed the scene. Also, I guess there was a pair of cleats that were in the back that were stolen from a charity event. Correct, (laughs) yes. Uh, I mean, if you couldn't look more guilty, uh, yeah, it doesn't look awesome for sure. No, pillar not of our at community, all. yeah, uh, which is crazy because Rasheed Rice has had such a great through college and everything. He's been a model guy, like so. You know, who the heck knows what happened? But I guess we'll, we'll hopefully find out more. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess everyone's true colors shine through when you're driving a Lamborghini going 120 down the freeway, right? Real question well, is yeah. who's Patrick Mahomes going to have his go to now outside of Travis Kelsey? They'll just draft a guy. Yeah. They'll, well, they'll look, get somebody. I mean, they we've got somebody seen... from rugby that we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. that's right. I guess yeah. we don't know. Again, call, stuff right? will play out and we'll see if, I mean, do they have the proof that they need? Do they, can they prove? Look, if, if Rasheed Rice wasn't driving or they, they make people believe he wasn't driving, right or wrong, let me preface it with that if he's if he's done this and everything that it seems like has happened has happened you gotta i mean you gotta get him right what can you do it's it's not right to let him go but but if he's not driving and no one was seriously hurt as bad as it is would you be shocked if somehow they found a way to legally he serves a small penalty and then he comes back no this will get this will get swept under the rug just like the shohei otani shit uh, I don't know if I. I mean, it'll it'll really maybe, will depend maybe, on how you, this comes out. Have you heard any more about that stuff? Nah, not no, not a thing, man. Not at all, huh? Well, it's a little no. different. So Rasheed weird, Rice isn't that. I know. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like it's just so crazy to me. If they want this stuff to go away, it just goes away. Isn't that crazy? It's like Epstein's list. It just goes it's, away. It goes. You just never find it. <laughs> Might be a little bit more high power than Rasheed Rice. But yeah. <laughs> there goes this episode. Uh, <laughs> we just get banned right away. Uh, <laughs> more on the field stuff for on the field stuff. The NFL. The Jets get their defensive end. Mm-hmm. Mano, you want to take this away? Because Hassan Riddick, you like this guy a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, he's From the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, former All-Pro for the Philadelphia Eagles. They send him to the Jets for a conditional Number seven. Third. What? Well, number seven. Yeah. That's such a weird for, number. For, well, yeah, well, they let guys start changing their jerseys a couple years ago, and it looks crazy when he's coming around the edge. Weird, he looks seven, like a kicker. So. Yeah, or yeah. quarterback. Or quarterback. But, yeah, so they send him to the Jets for a conditional third round that becomes a second if he plays 67.5% of snaps and registers 10 sacks. And that's a trade the Jets will make 100 out of 100 times because that means he had a monster year and he's capable of having one of those years. Almost theoretically, the Jets lost an edge rusher, Bryce Huff, to the Eagles just a couple of weeks ago. So it's cool. They replace him with a former Eagle. So that's pretty sick. And now, look, 
Time's up. I mean, I said this in a video earlier. That same old Jets crap is not going to fly anymore. Joe Douglas has made all the moves, and I've fried Joe Douglas for the last year or so. Right. That's on me. He's done a phenomenal job, and Jets are all in now. It's, it's win now or you're never going to win, guys. Uh, this front office will be gone. The head coach will be gone. Guys, it's time to go. Jets, time to go. Yeah, 100%. Well, I'm yeah. looking forward to that because the guy's, um, the guy's a stud. I mean, he had 10 sacks last season, last season and mm -hmm. he's just killing it. Um, Jadavian Clowney goes to the Carolina Panthers. And I'm wondering if this is kind of like a um, – this has got to be his last team he goes to, obviously, right? I mean, he's had a somewhat of a, a pretty good career. He's had a lot of injuries, of course. But I'm wondering, is this like what Julius Peppers did with the Bears? It's kind of like his last move, his last spot. What do what you think a, about that? The problem with Clowney is he kind of built himself up to be like this legend in college well, at South he had Carolina. That one hit. That one hit. He yeah. popped that Michigan guy's head off and then recovered the fumble. But like he was a five star guy, number one recruit, number one draft. Can pick. you show that, Malik? He set the bar crazy high. He's kind of been a bit of a letdown for like what we thought he was going to be. Well, he got hurt. He's been hurt. I mean, well, still, I mean, let down. Greg Oden was hurt, but he's considered a bust, Wait, right? did you say Greg Oden? Well, I'm saying. From Ohio State, Greg he's, Oden? He was the, hurt. To the trailblazers, Would you say Greg he had Oden? a great career? Wait, hold on. He's you a said, bust. Well, you said Greg Oden. We're bringing up Greg Oden, and then you're bringing up Jadavian Clowney. Yeah. I'm talking right. about athletes who are the number one comparison. overall picks and got hurt. You just said he got hurt. Ray, what do we think about the comparison? Do we like that? <laughs> for, for your sake. Do you know who Greg Oden is? No. Do you know who Greg Oden is? It's, it's the basketball guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, completely two different sports, but yeah, we're, it's we're fine. We're but there. I get it. I get what you're saying. Just saying, a guy but, who was supposed to, the expectations were through the roof, and if injuries, and I don't think Jadavion Clowney's been injured like that. He should have had a big career still. He yeah. just hasn't found it. Hasn't translated like it did in South Carolina. So he was physically superior to everybody in college, and in the yeah. NFL, everybody's physically superior. He was a man amongst boys, that's for, for sure. sure. Yep. Oh, here we go. Here's the favorite hit. God, there it is. Damn it. Poof. Yep. Was that the Outback Bowl? Oh, my Lord. That thing yep. was just brutal. I mean, that changed the whole trajectory of the whole game. Yeah, that's one of the craziest highlights. I think I ever. The game and he looks like a guy looks like too. he's a Marvel character. Oh my god, this that hit was just that that was the one that just put this guy on the map hard. It was like uh, it was like um, who was the the linebacker for Baylor? Penn State? Or, no, for oh. Penn State that had that one monster hit that one time. Uh, not Arrington. Well, Lavar Arrington. Lavar Arrington he jumped yeah. the. Lavar, that's exactly. He what. jumped the line and smoked somebody. But yeah, it's always a, those, yeah. It's always those, um, what a, those hits that put those guys on the map, and then you never hear from them again. Well, I mean, Lavar Arrington had a great, yeah, a great career. The thing is, like guys like that, when you're like a superstar, they, they kind of just run that clip over and over and over and over again. That winds up being like your staple. But yeah, a lot of them have got plays like that. But yeah, the Arrington one was crazy. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of football, we ran into our good friend of the uh, of the mouthpiece, Chase Claypool, yesterday. Ray, <sighs> could have been there, Ray. Could have been. <laughs> could have been there. That would have been cool. Free That'd tacos cool and I got an white wine. <laughs> right, wow, sounds great. Sounds like yeah, it's. Uh, it was cool. <laughs> Chris and I did a fun little interview with him, and uh, we have it right here for you guys for your enjoyment right now. Here, Chris Roll and Brady with Value Tame and Sports, the mouthpiece, joined by special guest Chase Claypool, NFL vet wide head receiver. Head uh, Chase, how we doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Appreciate you guys having me on. Nah, it's appreciate you joining us, man. Crazy weekend. Uh, tell me how yesterday went. Tell me what we're looking at today. Yeah, so yesterday, you know, I didn't know really what to expect. It's my first event, the mo model uh, volleyball beach tournament. So uh, it was really cool how they had it set up, the tournament bracket. Uh, yesterday was just for seeding, and then today was the playoffs. No doubt, man. You look like you're in insane left, shape. Right. Season went well. What do we got going forward, man? Yeah, so uh, I'm taking a different training approach. Uh, it's my first time training here in Florida, uh, working with some different people. Um, and combining that with my California training as well. So um, working with a lot of different people and trying to sharpen that. that are you, uh, are you, uh, have you always played volleyball or is this something you just kind of get into extracurricular? Just getting, just just getting into, into uh, I was filling in. Um, a team had a player missing, so I was just filling nice in um, for, for them. Yeah, it was super um, cool. Is there any hobbies besides volleyball and football that you like to do besides, you golf at all? You a golfer? Yeah, I love golf. Love uh, hitting the links and then um, like drawing and art and stuff like that. You're an artist? Yeah. My man, dude. Yeah. What do you like, pop art? I'm an artist too. Yeah, I like um, we should be like graphic design. I would say. Okay. More Come so. over to the house. I'll show you the studio. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can we give a shout out to? <laughs> All right. Uh, that's good. Like yeah. We, that's I consider you guys good. relatively big guys, and you guys look very small next yeah. to Chase, Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool is yeah. a huge human being, dude. He six is, four and a yeah. half. And I was on my tippy toes too. Don't uh, don't let it fool you. Yeah, I was looking at his feet, yeah. dude. I was like, this guy's yeah. his feet are the size of my forearm. Yeah. We, he's, still, he's still signed to Miami, right? He's no. a free agent now. He's a free agent. But it's cool. He changed. He's, he mentioned in the interview that he changed up kind of his training regimen 
He's going to do it down here now, kind of keep down in one spot, bring yeah. some of his Cali guys out here, and it's going to be cool. He's he's still young, and he's got a world of talent. So I'm, I'm excited, man. Let him straighten, yeah, let, was, get that all figured out and get himself I was locked in surprised. Somewhere. I was kind of surprised they lost because like the guy is such a force to be reckoned with, but also he's not really a volleyball player. So I guess it doesn't matter how tall you are, athletic you are. Volleyball is just a whole other oh, ball geez. of wax, if you will. Malik, you like volleyball? You play oh, volleyball? yeah, I love it. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. I like to play I, 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 I feel like it's, it's <laughs> I jump high. I can jump high, so it's good for me. Yeah, Corey, you're just bragging about your athletic abilities. <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, moving on to baseball, guys. Uh, it was kicking off. Baseball kicked off. My Chicago Cubs had their home opener today, and uh, they didn't disappoint. And I'm not talking about on the field. I'm talking about the pyrotechnics. It's a joke, <laughs> dude. I don't know what happened to our budget, but we're a billion dollar baseball team, <laughs> and we can't afford any pyrotechnics. <laughs> Do you see it, Malik? Do you see the, the the clip for the Cubs? I put it on there. Okay, look up, look it up. I got like five people sending it to me. Just go on TikTok or YouTube. And what happened was they're introducing all the players, and uh, the guys are running out from the dugout. And these, it looks like I've seen I've seen better pyrotechnics at a baby shower. Mm. I'm not kidding you. It's pretty impressive. Pyrotechnics is one of those things. Like if you're gonna do it, you gotta, you gotta do it. You if gotta you got, like, do sparklers it. Sparklers behind the guy, spark? it just looks hokey. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, yeah, there's terrible. guys holding Chris, sparklers. Might as well. Right. Yeah. Might as well. When, I mean, when I was growing up, I watched wrestling. Right. right. Of course. And when Goldberg would come out, they'd give him these monster-like pyro, and, and then they did a guy in. to like mock him in the other federation, and he'd come out to like sparklers. <laughs> and that's what I'm picturing in my head. I haven't seen this clip yet, but that's oh, dude, it's brutal. I mean, well, the Cubs suck. Well, hey, watch your mouth. Tell us how you really. Your mouth. <laughs> they suck. We are we are a Cubs family. You know why they suck, Brady? <laughs> We're you know, a Cubs family. I already here. went through a lot with the Cubs I that love, one night. <laughs> I love the Cubs. Hey Malik, if you can't find Can it, we'll the move link? On. what? Can you send the link? I don't have it. I'll send it to you. Um, anyways, we're moving on. So you said Soto had a big, um, a oh, big day, right? Yeah, the Yankees. He looks came like out. he's uh, he's definitely earning so, his money. Yeah. So the Yankees came out and made a statement. They go into Houston and take four from the. Defending AL champions every year, the Houston Astros. These are their rivals. This is big now going forward because the Yankees have already solidified the tiebreaker if this goes down to the end of the year. And Juan Soto goes bananas. Four games, he hits 526, 600 on base percentage, 765 slugging, 1365 OPS. Numbers that haven't been seen in a Yankee uniform, but one other time to the great Derek Jeter. Now, uh, going forward, now here's the deal. This is what I want to kind of touch on a little bit. Um... He's here theoretically in New York on like a one-year rental type of thing, right? Uh, Scott Boris is his agent, and Boris has a rule where he doesn't negotiate in season. But he's coming off a real bad offseason, which is real rare for Scott Boris, but his guys Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery were hoping for certain contracts, and he kind of overplayed his hand. So he's in a bad way right now. And I'd be really surprised if the Yankees don't try to approach them to get that extension done now. Because look, Soto's stock is through the roof. Even yeah. though it's only four games, go push to get your guy six hundred thousand, uh, six hundred million dollars right now, right. and see if you can get Boris to talk. You know, in season, uh, yeah. Soto had an otherworldly start to his career. Uh, he's kind of known to not be a great defensive player. He made two huge defensive plays to save games for the Yankees. A sliding catch one night. He shot a guy out at the plate in the eighth inning to kind of preserve the Yankees' lead. Another night. And, yeah, this guy's mentioned among the greats through his age 25 season already, and somehow he seems underrated still. He's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, the guy is de he's definitely earning his cash, that's for sure. I yeah, mean, some, I mean he's going to get, get a fortune. He'll probably get paid even more. But I think the, the Yankees will belly up and get him more cash. Here he is. Here's some, yeah, I some mean, highlights from our guy. This, yeah, this was the last game. Uh, he did this in the, in the eighth inning to, to send the Yankees ahead again. They've come, they came back four games in a row. The Yankees' bullpen was flawless all weekend while the Astros got smacked around all weekend, and that's – yeah, it's the same clip. But, yeah, there's a clip yeah. earlier in the weekend him throwing a guy out. Like I said, man, I just think now would be the time to jump on it if you're Boris, who doesn't negotiate in season – Get your guy paid right now. Yeah. God forbid he gets hurt. God forbid he has a bad year. Now's the time. And if you're the Yankees, you can lock in a, you know, a legendary left-handed bat for Yankee Stadium for the next 10 years who's 25 years old. I was just so about go to say. Do it. Yeah. He, you know? The future go definitely do it. looks bright for him as well. Um, what doesn't look bright was the, the Cubs. <laughs> back to the Cubs real quick. Do we have it? Because yeah, I have to show you this real quick, and then we'll get back. Yeah, to, let me see. It. Yeah, watch this. Look at their pyrotechnics. Look at the sad little buildup they have right here. That's your that. Look the at this blue carpet. Oh, that's the pyros. That's, that's the, the pyrotechnics party. 
Yeah, it looks like a kid. Yeah, you probably party. just play a nice Yo, tune for the guys I've now. Seen, no, yeah. that's not necessary. Look, at, here comes, here they comes Suzuki. Even, they shouldn't even done the pyro. Right. I've st- dude, my grandpa had better fireworks at his 90 year, 90 birthday. Like, it was awful. At like, his, that's awful. I thought you were about to say at his funeral. But yeah. Like, oh, no, really no. <laughs> we'll have, yeah, we'll have pyrotechnics at his funeral, too. <laughs> yep, Snoop Dogg's going to be there as well. We're just going to have his body drop from the ceiling. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, that was just embarrassing. Um, Yamamoto had a tough time, right? You well, said he had for, a tough time in his first game, but he bounced back and his stuff looked nasty. I put a clip on there of him just breaking a guy off. Malik, do we have that clip? But Yamamoto goes five innings, two hits, zero earned, and five Ks. And his stuff is just nasty. That was, his stuff's falling that was, off the table. Look at this. Look, man, it's a big change coming from Japan, especially with that type of fanfare. Oof. Took him a uh, start to get acclimated and comfortable, but his stuff was dirty yesterday. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr., another young star, he's hitting 545 right now with a 667 on base, and he's leading the league with a 1400 slugging right now right. through the first weekend. The Royals paid him $288 million before his 23rd birthday. So that tells you what they think of him, and that's already paying dividends. So that's uh, he's having a monster year to start. And Araldis Chapman, who's been in the league seemingly forever, did something incredible this weekend. He touched 101 miles an hour for the 15th straight year. Wow. No other player has ever done it more than six seasons, and he's never had any significant arm injuries or anything like that, which is kind of crazy in this like, environment with pitchers. They're always getting hurt. So shout out to Araldis Chapman, who's coming off a couple of like down years. Nice to see him kind of finding his groove, and hopefully he, he does well over there in Pittsburgh. I remember when he came into the league, and he was throwing just the meanest 104? stuff. 104? 104, yeah, 105. He came and in as also, a starter, remember Yeah, that? but also he's, he's a towering guy, too. And you've seen his workout regimen? Yeah. His workout regimen, the guy is a monster in the, um, he's kind of like Ray. He's like a, just a monster in the weight room, you oh, know? And just pushing people around. Yeah. Yeah, taking no for an answer. Taking no everyone. for an answer. And when you play baseball, when you have a pitcher who's a Raldis Chapman, he's, he's tall and he's long and lanky. Yeah. And the mound is above you when you hit. So by the time they're done with their big stride, it's almost like they're right on top of you with the ball. And when you're throwing 104, it's just like close your eyes. Swing the bat and just pray to God something connects. Yeah, I remember when he came out for the for the Cubs uh, game seven against right. Cleveland. Oh, uh, God. What? I, what? I, 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 I am sick what? of Raldis Chapman. I, what? Like, I'm just I'm just I'm chatting of baseball. Of Chapman, what I'm he says. Like, I, I'm just a, chatting <laughs> baseball, brother. As a Cleveland <laughs> Indians about, fan, not, or all just Cleveland Chapman Guardians, Malik. By the way, Guardians, Guardians, by the way you guys touched him. You touched him. And yeah. we had to bring in another guy. Uh, I forget who closed it out. Fuck, I forget who closed it out. But Aroldis Chapman was supposed to close it out for us. And then once they touched him, I was like, oh, we're going to lose. <laughs> we're losing. The Cubs are going to win the, lose the World Series. But we didn't. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember the rest of the night. Yeah. And then the following year, uh, that's when he, he made it end up, ended up on the Yankees. And then in the playoffs, Indians at the time had to face the Yankees. And Chapman came in and, and, and did his business. And that yeah. was it for the Indians. And you know how Chapman went to the – how it happened with the Cubs, right? The Yankees traded him to the Cubs. They got Glaber Torres. I remember, yeah. And then they got uh, Chapman back later. So that was like 3D chess with well, they were uh, Cashman like, back the then. The Cubs were like, we're never going to win this ever well, again. You lent, we lent him to the Cubs. Yeah. He closed the World Series. And that's probably a win for both teams, right? Because the Yankees <sighs> grabbed Glaber Torres out of it. Take me back, dude. 2016, money-making. Going to Dodger Stadium, almost getting in fights with dudes every single time. I mean, just, you know, nothing, nothing better. Look at him. Oh, you're going to play him getting touched? You would, dude. <laughs> you would. No, this is when he came in to close out the game. No. Yep. Uh, when I mean, he tied game No, six. he didn't close this game. He, clo- he tied the series up with this game. Yeah, that's true. They, yeah. He did do that. Look at him just throwing cheddar, though. 102. 102 high. That looks like a beach ball, and it's gone. <sighs> yeah, it is a great performance that I'll year. I'll tell you what, though. That, that was one of the better World Series I've, I think I've ever seen. And I, it sucks because Javi Baez is my, one of my favorite players. Well, was. Dude, he fell off a cliff, Javi Baez. I don't know what oh, happened to the guy. Cow. He got paid. He went to the Mets, had a horrible time. And now, he went to the, and now he's with the Tigers. He's with the Tigers. He had like 100 in the, in the spring training. I think he's having a better year this year. I'll oh, have that's to good. check I on hope my boy so. Javi. Ray, you're not much of a baseball guy, are you? No, I used to play baseball. Oh, you did? What did you play? Uh, first base. Nice. First base. Nice. Did you have the first base glove and everything? Yeah. 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 I was I was pretty nasty. I wouldn't doubt it. I was it. all league. I was supposed to. I, I all league. Yeah, I was supposed to compete in uh, Division One, but I chose wrestling instead. Chris, you played. You I played. Like uh, did you play travel? Did you play <laughs> traveling baseball? Shortstop. I played for the the national team at fourteen. I was I was did. always going to play baseball. I thought until I stepped on a football field, and then I was kind of like I just love this so much. We yeah. should have just said baseball. Yeah, I played said, short. Yeah, you should have played. Ba- yeah, you look like Mickey Man- Mantle's like stunt double, like for yeah. real, dude. Yeah, for <laughs> well, sure. I appreciate that. Of course, dude. Mickey Mantle was a stud. It was amazing. Yes. 
Um, we're flying, baby. We're absolutely flying. We're already into the good, the bad. And do we care? Cool. Uh, my good was Luka Doncic is having a phenomenal season. He's also second. He is runner up for MVP this year behind Joker. There's Mickey. There's, there's Luka Doncic. That right there is Mano's dad. <laughs> Literally, or grandpa. That's Mano's grandpa right there, dude. Little there do you know. You were wow, thinking yeah, that. kind of look like Doesn't him. he look like Do a side by side. Mano, mantle. It's not far off. It's not yeah. far off. Who knows? Who knows? Back in the Dude, day, you know, from now on, <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to his value team. It's very own Mickey Mantle. That's I appreciate I, that because Mickey Mantle was like a lady killer when he was young. He yeah, used to get a lot of chicks. Mickey guess Mantle. what? There's also a lot of other things he did too that you might not want to know of about. Them. Yeah, <laughs> tons yeah. of them. I'm sure. Yeah, it's I'm a lot sure. Of, it's a lot of. Drinking. There's some bad stories about Mick out there. A lot of cookie. No, I'm um, <laughs> just joking. I don't know. I, don't, don't that's wrong. I'm thinking of Lenny Dykstra. <laughs> oh, Lenny Dykstra. Yeah, nails. I talk to Lenny a little bit on social media. Do you really? I do. Yeah, I think he's, he's sober now. I think he got sober, but man, he used to go on no, Howard he's not Stern fun anymore. He used to go. He, he yeah, I know. Is, he <laughs> is funny to listen to, boy. Yo, he, he used to go on to Howard Stern and just get racked by those guys, and he had no clue. And he's like, Robin, I will go down on you. He Robin. did say that, yeah. And yeah. he's a huge conservative now, so he gets fried on on social media, but he comes right with it. Like oh, he'll come sure. right back at you, yeah. God, he was the best back in the day, too. Good mm -hmm. old days, baby. They're gone. No, I'm sure. Uh, but no, like I said. <laughs> I love Thank you, Malik. Side. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Malik. Um, yes, yeah, so let's go to wow. Luka. Luka Doncic just doing what Luka Doncic does. It's just impossible shots. Oh, it's uh, just crazy. Yeah, this looks like, this does not look like an easy shot to do, but he's just messing around. He's just goofing around in pre-warm-ups. Look at this. Let's just throw it off the scoreboard. Do you know what I thought you were going to put up? That's impressive. Right? Isn't that crazy? Do you know what that I was the first time we up? did it, right? Huh? Hey, Malik, do we have wow. two seconds? Can you pull up yeah, Luka Doncic wow. underhand shot? He hit a shot in a game yes. this week. That's how I thought you were going to put up. And I was yeah. like, how did he just make a three underhand, well, like just chucking it up? I think he had 50 points that game, too. It was yeah, a, I mean, I mean, I I wouldn't be point shocked at all. He's yeah, incredible. No, that's, that's insane. But yeah, when you said he hit a crazy shot, I thought you were going to pull up the underhand. So I guess he hit multiple crazy shots this week. That's all the Man. guy does. Is well, Malik's just, a wizard. I'm sure he can get it if we have it just in five seconds. Up, but if not, he just pulls no up deal. all. He just pulls up for anywhere and basically makes it. I mean, that was that to me was impressive. Uh, the guy. There just, it is. Here we go. So look, just a little flick, right-handed from the three underhand. Boop. Come on, Dude. what are we doing? Yeah, that's a, that's stupid. He's ridiculous. He's got. A he's even laughing. It's a look, joke he's, for him. He's, look, like, he's yeah. wearing. He's got one sleeve. I mean, what are you doing? He's you got know? one sleeve. You know, he's just, he's, you can do whatever he feels he loose with that right arm. You know? you know what my favorite is that everyone's doing now in the NBA or the WNBA is everyone wears that one leg, the one, the one long, leg sleeve. Yeah. And then yeah. the other one's off. I'm like, what are we doing here? Yeah. I don't understand this that. Is this a fashion statement? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't get know. it. Like, I don't usually wear glasses, but I have glaucoma for the people at home that want to know that. <laughs> just say you All have right. LASIK. And, uh, and, <laughs> uh, moving on. What do you have, Chris, for your good? All right. So my, the good is. After it seemingly being like not cool to, to express your faith and talk about, you know, your, your love of the Lord or stuff like that, guys kind of shied away from it for a long time. But it's starting to come back, and I really like it. A lot of the young stars, Christian McCaffrey, Jordan Love, and C.J. Stroud have, you know, really been open and honest about it. And it's becoming more prevalent back in sports. I think that's cool. We have a clip. Malik, you can play any one of them. But to have three young faces of the league kind of be courageous enough to come out and speak about it, I think is really cool. Yeah. So Bless shout out to those three. Bless up for sure. Years, I, for three years, I've watched you run out. Would you call it the shadows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, being in the shadows. <laughs> of Aaron Rodgers, and now it's your moment. I don't even know where to start other than what have you taken over three years that you just cannot wait to put on display for this franchise and these fans? Yeah, I mean, the past three years, it's been just a lot of learning, growing, developing as a player, and just waiting for that opportunity to get on the field and go showcase it out. Out there. How did your leadership change on, on your peers in the locker room? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely changed. Um, I think a lot of it is just being able to see some of the older guys, see Aaron, how he leads. Um, yeah, this was preseason last year. And is, then McCaffrey's you know, come out you since kind of and talked about it. And, and then CJ Stroud. So we don't have to let it drag out too um, long. So but yeah, kind of I thought it was cool that, that guys are starting to kind of find that again and kind of feel comfortable being able to say it where after a couple of years it seemed like it wasn't cool or it was like frowned upon so shout to those guys i know jonathan isaac does it a lot in nba so faith has got me uh where i am in life and uh through a lot all the ups and downs i when i rely on god and um you know anytime i'm having a tough day or having a bad time in my life i just get back to getting into the word and it's got all the answers yeah um, and so it's it, all right yeah, that's plenty. Thank you, though, Malik. That's Appreciate good. it. Yeah, I, you know what? You always got to bring God into the whole equation. I think that's great because nowadays, if you look around, 
with what Joe Biden did yesterday with the the uh, whole decision with uh, making Easter not Easter. We won't have to go into details, but um, it's good to have what a loser. Uh, it's good to have yeah. It's good to have the God in your back pocket nowadays. If you tell me. Uh, Ray, what do you have? Do you have anything for good? Yeah, for us? so for have, the Ray? good, um, over the weekend we had a UFC fight night, a uh, live audience outside the Apex at Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, for the good, we got Nate Landwehr uh, coming back, knocking out Jamal Emmers. Phenomenal. Guy's an, absolute you got a clip for us? Guy's an absolute stud with the clip I do have. He's a phenomenal on the mic after he wins, so I got a bunch of clips of like Nate. That. On the mic, post press conference, like that. talking to several, yeah, Michael Bisbing, um, Daniel Cormier, but guy's just a stud. He takes a beating and he keeps walking forward and he keeps winning. I'm a fan of him now, um, but yeah, he's is a, he a young guy? Oh, I think he's like 32, 33. Dude's dude's a stud, man. I mean, I wasn't really too much of a fan of him, but I he grew on me and I I, I like I like his style now. And while we pull it up, shout yeah. to Chris Weidman who completed well, his comeback well, and got a win. Well, yeah, I was, I that was going to be one of. Oh, I'm I was sorry. Talk about the whole thing, but yeah, Chris Weidman too. Well, we'll have to we'll have to uh, we'll have to check it out in just a little bit. But yeah. um, no, we'll definitely have to. And what was the guy's name? You said Ray. You said the guy's name was what? Nate Landwood. Nate Landwood. Yeah, we'll yeah, definitely yeah. look up for Nate Landwood and uh, Jorge and his chips. Um, yeah. All right, for <laughs> for the bad, for the bad. Um, <laughs> Russ getting into Shout it. Jorge and his chips. Jorge's just crushing Cheetos back He's the there. Man. We love Jorge. Um, that's Jorge's good. Um, my bad. My bad is Russ uh, Russell Westbrook getting into it with a guy wearing a balloon hat on his head. But you know what? Whatever triggers you. So uh, Russ did not like. Russ is always getting into fights with people in the stands. Russ hates getting called Westbrook. He thinks it's like a shame to his family name. And I think. I don't know, man. I understand. Do you understand? Like, if you're on, on stage and some guy who has no business doing comedy could never do what you do, talks reckless to you and disrespectful, yeah. it would drive me crazy, too, I, I think. I get it all the time. You know what I yeah. do? I, I, kill him, I kill him slowly with my words. Well, I mean, that's all Russ can do, yeah. right? He can't punch him in the head, so he, nah, he kills will. One of these days, I think he's just going to burst and punch he him in may. the head. He gets close sometimes. There we go. Look at him. Uh, honestly, if I'm getting clowned by a guy with a balloon on his head, I just walk away. But that yeah, guy does it. that knowing that nothing can happen to him. He's four foot eight. He's yelling at Russell Westbrook, who's accomplished yeah, more I, by well, 20 but years old. Than, who cares? No, I get it. Who no, cares? I hear you. I hear you. These I'm not much of a yeller, these are, but these are the, these are the he's dorks, arguing with a balloon on his These head. are the dorks that, that w will go on your page and write just nonsense Absolutely. on your Twitter. I get a lot those of are, Those are the I guys. I appreciate like, That's the guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyways, what do you have, uh, Chris, for your bet? Yeah, look, we'll, we'll get through mine quick because we played the clip earlier. It was Zach Eady and his embellished. Just my thing is embellished underdogs. This guy's a seven foot four monster at an IMG Academy. We see a lot of guys do this nowadays. I'm sorry, Malik. I love you. It's been LeBron's thing forever. Hard life, sure, but at six nine two seventy, these guys do these underdog stories, and I'm just like, come on, guys. You guys were built to do this, so let's chill with the underdog talk. You know? Yeah. Also, you 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 guys have been together for four years straight. I mean, yeah. like I, I love. Him on the court, but come on, how, how are we going to pretend like at 7 4 and an IMG ACAD graduate? I don't know. You, I just you're like an underdog is crazy to me. Do you have it, Malik? Or, uh, no, we played it on? earlier. It's cool. We can go through it. Do we pull it up? Yeah. Okay, fine. Ray, you have. Uh, well, do you, do you have my clip for the bad? If uh, not, no, I don't have it. If not, I will completely <laughs> pivot here for the bad and uh, bring up some live news. Today, we go have ahead. a passing of uh, former Miami Dolphins and Colts, sure. uh, Vernon Davis. Vontae oh, Davis. Vontae Davis. Yeah, Sorry. Vernon, yeah, Vernon, yeah, Vernon yeah. correct. Yeah, Vontae Davis yeah. passed away R.I.P. Today. Vernon Davis. I mean, yeah. Vontae but Davis. See, see. Wow. He all screwed up. <laughs> the wheels are just falling off here at the good, the bad, and do we care? But yeah, no, but that that was this morning. News yeah. broke, so might as well break it on the mouthpiece live. So. Yeah, I saw Very that earlier, sad. and uh, so. it's, it's sad. He's 35 years old. They found him dead at his house. Yep. I don't know if you ask me. I think there's there's complications at play, but they also said maybe yep. it was something self inflicted. Who knows? But until we know, uh, we don't. We don't know. know. Yeah. So uh, moving on, I'm gonna just go with because I, I have mine um, with the do we care? Um, since you you don't have the you don't have yours you don't have your bad. That was it, right? Anyways, moving yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna yeah. go there. Do we care? Uh, this I thought our guy Tim Dillon. He's done the PBD podcast. He's a good friend of mine. Do a lot of shows with him at the Comedy Store. But Tim Dillon, on his podcast, talked about this with Taylor Swift when they were sitting at Nobu, and I thought it was. I just thought this has nothing to do with sports. But you know what? It's the do we care? So you know what? Do I care if you care? No, I don't care. So we're pulling it up anyways. Uh, here we go. Taylor Swift Turn it up. True. I walked in. I Please. had a couple of guys who'd opened for me on the road. 
And one of them, I said, some celebrities go here sometimes, Nobu Malibu, and one of them was real, you know, kind of like, Ugh. have you seen this the like a guy who's no. from like North Dakota or something, you know what I mean? It's a place where people grow up eating Pop Tarts and stuff. And so he doesn't know what sushi is or, you know, he doesn't understand anything. So we, we take him in and he goes, um, he goes, oh, yeah, celebrities here. You know who ends up showing up? Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Robert De Niro. I was like, these are some of the biggest celebrities in the world. Taylor Swift is the biggest celebrity in the world. She gets on a table. I swear to God, she stands up on a table in Nobu Malibu. And I'm not lying to you. And I don't want people, because this was, she literally said, this is between us. She made everyone put their phones down. She gets on a table. You want to hear what she does? She starts hiling Hitler on a table, going, I love Hitler. No yes. Way, is there a video anywhere no then? Way. I don't know, but I don't think Tim Dillon would make this shit so, up. She's, so she's going, I love Hitler. And then every <laughs> restaurant, people are going, we How crazy love is that? Gonna say so no she one made everyone put their phones down. But isn't that scary as fuck, though? It's she like, that so scares powerful. the hell out of me. As soon as Taylor Swift tells you, put your phone down, I'm about to do something crazy, doesn't oh, that make oh. you want to pick your phone up? So, yeah. Wait, Nobody in there got that? That's crazy. Why is Taylor Swift saying I love Hitler out of nowhere? I don't know, dude, but I'm telling you. Honestly, that's very funny, though. I don't know, man. She's, she's, there's, I'm telling you, when you're that famous, you do weird shit. Yeah, but they're so left that I don't. I highly doubt they would do that. How much that drugs do you have sense. to be on? You think to do something like that? Are you on all of the cocaine, or just a little? Well, bit? Taylor Swift's also, like you said, one of the biggest current current biggest stars, celebrities, probably in media in general as of right now. Right. For her to just so, say so. Heil Hitler at a party is just ridiculous. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to get fried for that. Do you think Taylor Swift's camp definitely reaches out to him and says, why are she you did, saying yeah, this? She was doing a lawsuit on AI stuff, so I'm sure she should, you know, if this guy's saying allegedly that he's, if it's not that's a hilarious. Lie, I mean, if it's not a lie, I don't see any way, like, <laughs> if Tim Dillon lie. shouldn't be worried, right? If it's not a lie. I mean, I don't know. What do you Regardless, think, Malik? Do you think, that, do you think that's bullshit, or do you think that could possibly happen? Uh, I mean, yeah, you like a lot of these people, you don't know who they are. Like they so always weird. have this like persona for the cameras and everything. But how are these people really closed doors? They're like <laughs> they're they sign contracts to portray a certain image. Yeah, so, but like, you, you know, did you hear him though too? Taylor you know Swift is fucking like, saluting Hitler behind you, closed doors. You gotta doors. imagine, though, even really if, really you gotta imagine though, that even if phone cameras weren't out, a restaurant that would get Kelsey and, and Taylor and De Niro and DiCaprio to come in have to have cameras everywhere, right? You didn't get them to shut down the, the house cameras. I'm yeah. sure they're up There's somewhere. probably others. People there saying has that. To be. Yeah, but you know what they were saying too is people were chanting with her uh, just to like get a picture with her, just to like play along with her. She said even the, he said even the fat sushi guys in the back were saying it too. <laughs> like, like are we this, are we this um, just like programmed to just go with whatever celebrities are doing and saying. She probably went like this, right? She probably was like this. Want to make a bet? And, and De Niro's maybe, like, maybe. Yeah, what are the yeah, odds uh, are? Okay. And he goes, sure. And he goes, yeah, let's make a bet. And she goes, I'm going to get on the table and I'm going to say hi, Hitler. And, and DiCaprio's like, don't do it. And she like, <laughs> and she's like, watch this. And Kelsey's like, get down. Yeah. And she's like, fuck it. And then she just starts doing it. <laughs> right? You just painted out the and whole Niro, thing. And De Niro's it. just sitting there like, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. better than what I would do. Not bad. It's, 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 okay. <laughs> get the close up, Kara. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> I would do better, but. <laughs> okay, that's my De Niro. Anyways, all right, moving on. Sorry, Chris. We just get off the rails, and that's my fault. It is that's all good. We are going to completely pivot. <laughs> We're going to pivot back. Sorry. To Hitler? My do we care? I just couldn't believe Chris that. is going to talk about Hitler, too. My do we care yeah. is a dude named Donald we De La Hay. God and Hitler in the same fucking thing. Now, Donald De La Hay is yeah. better known by everybody in YouTube world as Destroying. One of the biggest, you know, football content creators in the world. Uh, 5.8 million subscribers. Jeez. He was a kicker for UCF about seven or eight years ago yeah, before the NIL was ever a thing. And they made him choose. They said, you're going to either stop making your videos and making money, the NCAA said, or you can leave UCF. So he left a football scholarship on the table. But as everybody knows in that world, the guy's a phenomenal athlete and a great kicker. Well, he signed recently with um, the UFL's San Antonio Brahmas, started his first game uh, this weekend, and he shined as a kicker. So shout to Destroying, uh, who persevered for five, six, seven years afterwards. Here he is. And it's going to look like the kick is short, but understand the UFL kicks from a lot further back than the NFL. So that normally in the NFL goes out the back of the end zone or sits somewhere in the back of the end zone. Mm. So shout to Destroying, who kind of persevered. They didn't take him serious for a long time. He built up a huge following. for doing, And he had to quit for doing something that now is widely accepted and okay. 
so, so I'm glad to see him little. do it. He's making more money yeah. now, or nah, he's probably making a ton of money. He's not. He, the beautiful thing is, he doesn't have to choose. He can still make his football content and get bread off his YouTube account while he kicks. He's double dipping. So it's cool, man. Good yeah, for him. Man. He's, he's worked. All, he's worked hard. He's actually very good. He hasn't gotten. It's made it harder the fact that he's a YouTube star to get in because people don't think he takes it serious. Yeah. But it's cool to see him in there and thriving. So shout to Destroy. For sure. Maybe we'll get him on the show one of these days. That'd be sick. Yeah. Um, cool. Ray, take us home. What do you have? Yeah, I got a video of Taylor Swift saluting him. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Nice callback, Ray. No. But. Um, over the weekend, Chris brought it up. Chris Weidman did win over the weekend. It was great to see him win, but also it didn't come with some controversy. Um, he uh, hit him with a double eye poke, um, very similar to the water boy. And uh, <laughs> Bruno Silva went down, and they thought he got – Chris Weidman caught him with a left hook, but it was actually uh, – or sorry, right. And uh, Chris did a double poke in both of his eyes. The guy dropped down and said he poked him in the eyes, and it wasn't because of the shot. Um, you're going to watch it right here. See, he goes down. He's holding his eyes. It looks like Chris caught him with a shot. He's pounding him out. And the ref's going to jump in, stop it. Looks like Chris won. He immediately, Bruno Silva gets up. He starts protesting the call and saying, wait, I, he didn't drop me from the shot. He dropped me from the eye poke. And they slow it down, and it actually is a double eye poke in both of his eyes. The problem is, which Chris then said in his post fight, look at this. Boom, one, ready, clearly in the yeah, eye, but, ready? Yeah. Oh, Here's God. two right there scrapes him right in the other eye. <laughs> uh, but, Ray, let me ask you a question. Isn't that part of boxing or fighting, though? Isn't that part of MMA? Like, <sighs> can, Do you have control of your hands like that? It's tough. In those, situ in those situations, it's it's hard to call. But one thing I did like what Chris Weidman said is, hey, if I poke you in the eye, don't drop like I just you know knocked you out. He goes, you know, people get up and st stand you know, up and say stand my, up eyes, and my eyes. eyes. He did drop, and you know that's one thing I have to agree with Chris. You know, I... I probably, if I got poked, I probably wouldn't drop to the floor, but dependent on how hard he got poked in the eye, I don't know. There's a lot of controversy for and, it right now. And, Ray, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Bruno appealed. Did he appeal the judgment? So how Correct. does that work in MMA? Correct. So what they what they did was it was originally uh, a TKO win for Chris Weidman, and then they ru ruled it back as a decision win because they didn't actually – I thought it was going to be a no contest, so instead they just went from who won, who won uh, round one and two, and Chris Weidman won both those rounds. Okay. So it went from originally a TKO win for Chris to now going, we're not going to call it a no contest, but who won the rounds previously. But he was hoping for a no contest because that kind of like scrubs the L from his it record. Does, it does, it does, yeah. but for Chris Weidman, which I'm a fan of as well. Huge fan, Hoss awesome. is finest, yeah. He's been through a lot, a lot of injuries, just a lot of, in general, negative things that have happened in and out of his He's life. He's a good and dude. He, great guy. Yeah. I've been I was going to say, I haven't, heard, I haven't heard his name in a hot Minute. Yeah, a former UFC middleweight champion of the world, yeah. the All American. He was undefeated, knocking out Anderson Silva for the title. You know, mm -hmm. great guy. Um, good to see him back in the W column, and he still wants to fight. So, yeah. Well, shout out to Chris yeah. Weidman. Uh, boys, sure. great show. Fantastic show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do you have any parting words for the for the people at home, Chris? Same as usual, man. Uh, check me out, please, on Manect. Download the app. Uh, let's talk. And Instagram, Man of Steel. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Please continue to engage with us. We're trying to grow this thing for you all. For with sure. us. Let's go. Big Bad Ray. Yeah, great show, guys. Next time you guys go to a volleyball uh, tournament, that'd be great if I got the invite, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, for sure, 100%. You got Thank it, you. Ray. Thank you, guys. Yep, you know yep. everything that goes on down here. How did you not know about yeah, that? Yeah, he knows. I, I actually did know about he it. Knows. I did know about 100. it. <laughs> By the way, Mano, don't ever believe this guy. I, I, did, I did He's know Mr. About Miami. The this guy knows everything. Public too. Yeah. Totally. It's a free event. Totally. Yeah, it's a free event. Ray got all the VIP bracelets and didn't <laughs> use any of them. <laughs> Malik, what do you have for the people at home for your parting words? Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in on this Monday evening and also don't forget to check out vtmerch.com there you go ladies and gentlemen thank you bang, so much bang. that's been our show if you liked what you've seen today please like Malik said subscribe to our channel we have tons of reels from Chris Mano reels from Ray reels from Malik uh, reels all just, from Brady all, all yep. new, yeah reels from me yep. all new content also on our Instagrams as well as we're trying to grow the mouthpiece and here at Value Tamed Sports we're trying to grow that channel as well mm -hmm. so with and that Neil said, Patrick Harris too and Neil and give you a shout out to my boy Neil Patrick Harris uh, <laughs> he'll never be on the show um, with, with that said guys we will see you next week uh, that has been the mouthpiece I've been your host Brady Matthews and have a great week everyone talk to you soon <laughs>